So I say $4,000 over the course of, I think it was eight months. Then the world went to shit. We're thinking ahead and manifesting a brighter future. Please 2020, lit better, please. Hi, my name's Erica and I'm a little fucked up. Welcome back to my channel and thank you guys for coming back. This is pretty much a summation of things that I learned in the last couple years of my 20s after I left my boyfriend of nine years, which you can watch the video here. I also wanna let you guys know that I do host a podcast with my best friend in the world where we talk about a variety of topics, including sex, including how we fit into the world being women of color. A lot of times when I look at YouTube videos about this topic about saving money, it's typically from someone who's like uber rich or uber successful on social media somehow. And it's not really giving you like real life tools with those of us with actual real job. I myself was not disciplined enough to notice that how much I was spending when I was swiping. So uh, when I sat down with myself and got real with myself, like, hey girl, you're spending way too much money. I was able to kind of streamline into the tips that I'm going to give you. Wasn't saving effectively, wasn't being honest with myself as far as like how bad my money skills were. And in addition to that, how you can take my good habits and apply them to your life. Obviously, I'm not rich, as you can tell. Oh, I haven't blown up on YouTube yet, but maybe one day, who knows? But I did have a commission-based job, so although it was a very um, different career from someone with a set salary, um, these tools are to help you save your whatever residual money that you have with your job or your second job um, in order to save for a rainy day, save for a down payment on a house, save for a car, whatever it is, these tips can help you. They're a little brutal. If you're not ready to save money, then I don't think that you're going to want to do some of these tips. But if you're serious, it's only going to take a few months for you to get a what I call a cushion. If you find yourself where you don't make enough money to sustain the bills that you have and you realize that, don't panic. Okay. Honestly, you want to either pick up a side hustle. There are plenty of side hustles that you can do. Actually, my friend Liz, who has a YouTube channel, she um, has a lot of good videos on how to start a side hustle business with no money. So I would check her out. In addition to that, um, there's always getting a second job. I worked multiple jobs in my lifetime. And I know some people are just like, I don't have time for another job. Just give me the tips. I'll give you the tips, but honestly, if it's not enough, then you might wanna look into getting a second or third stream of income. I'm gonna give you eight tips that helped me save money. Now, I know it's not like a really sexy number, like 10 or five or whatever, but eight tips should be enough for you guys to sit through this video. Without further ado, tip number one, cut off all your subscriptions for at least six months. Um, three months if you really like, can't handle it. But honestly, me chopping off subscription services, anything that I was paying monthly, the reason why this is important is because you're going to allocate those funds to something like food. You're going to go on a really strict food budget in order to save money. Now, this is not necessarily eating like crackers and cheese for dinner or ramen noodles because we're not like college poor, but some of you guys might be on that wave. If you are, no judgment. I'm just saying like, if you're moderately established and you kind of go grocery shopping and kind of go out to eat, you're going to want to condense a lot of things. So one of those tips is like getting a lot of the money that you would have spent on stuff like subscriptions and um, moving that into your budget where you can either save it or bring it into something that you can use it for later in the month. Go old school with it write down um, everything you spend. Um, long story short, I did a budget journal for the six months that I started saving money. And within that journal, I wrote down every single thing that I spent. So if you want a video on how exactly I did that, um, please like this video and comment down below. There are apps on your phone, obviously, that will show you like, hey, you know, you spent this much in groceries, this much in whatever. That stuff doesn't work for me. So monthly, I would take what my bills were in my budget, so things that were going to come out every single month no matter what I did. So that's your rent, your electricity, your phone, um, including food, which I have a very particular format that I used to do for food since I did used to eat out a whole lot um, and I was trying to transition to cooking so I can save more money and have a grocery bill. Anytime that I went out and spent money, even if it was going to CVS to 
buy a pack of gum, I wrote that down. Um, this is in order for you to keep track of what you're spending and how much you're going over budget. It's one of those things that you have to psychologically get into the mindset. And on my channel, I've talked a lot about getting into mindset. So once you tally together how much your bills that are going to come out every single month, there's going to be a section wherever you choose to write down your spending. Um, I call it my miscellaneous section, but all that stuff is, is things that I didn't have to spend money, but I chose to. When you have this list together, you're going to um, pretty much tally up everything that you spent and you're going to do this exercise that I did, which was say, okay, I spent this much money um, this month. What are things that I was spending money on that I need versus things that I was just spending on because it was there. A lot of the reason why I was spending money is because I worked a high stress job. Um, I either didn't have enough time to prepare my food. I wasn't prepared for like sustenance. So drinking water, I would buy a something out of Starbucks for coffee instead of making my own coffee. I would go to get a bottle of water at the gas station when I could just bring a whole gallon of water and drink on that for the rest of the day while I'm at work. Um, so little things that you notice that you spend money on is really gonna become streamlined when you budget effectively and when you write down everything you spend. So uh, many of us do have issues with credit card debt. Credit cards, is the bane of my existence. In my video where I talked about leaving my boyfriend of nine years, I skipped over the part where I had over $20,000 worth of debt <laughs> that I accumulated in this relationship, trying to make a relationship work that wasn't conducive to what I needed. Um, hopefully no one um, is in that predicament, but if you are, trust me, you can get out of it and it's going to be okay. Here's the thing. Most people are going to tell you that you need to pay off your credit card debt as fast as you can. But for me, this is the way that I thought about it. You can think about it in a different way, but this is how I did. The debt that you accumulated, for whatever reason, is going to be there no matter what you do. So for me, I prioritize um, saving a nest egg rather than focusing on my credit card bills. A lot of the stress that we face as people with no money or little money or no savings or whatever the case is, is the fact that like, not only do we not have enough money to live, but we, in addition, don't have anything saved. So as you saw with the pandemic, people were freaking out because they were not prepared for potentially not having a job. And if you didn't weren't getting unemployment, like it was even more stressful. And I can't imagine if people had a family. So um, I prioritize having a nest egg as opposed to paying down my debt. Now, if you're going to do that, a couple of things with credit cards. You must pay your bill on time, <laughs> okay? That's number one. But number two is you wanna pay over the minimum balance. So whether it's $5, $25, $100, um, over the minimum payment. Once you do that, um, if you can, if you can't just pay the minimum balance and be done with it, but if you ha are able to budget a little bit over, that'll help pay down a little bit of the interest, but in addition to that, um, you're staying within your budget. Once you pay over the minimum balance and you're in tandem saving your money, you can start adding more into that credit card payment and paying more than you know what the minimum balance is because the goal is to get out of debt however if we're here to save money you can't exactly save money if you're putting all your savings into your credit card because it's a really good feeling once you guys um get to a point where like you have enough money saved and so anything else that you get is either like going into the pot or you know you really are just chilling you're not stressed because you know that you have this money in the bank so hopefully that makes sense Speaking of credit card, as you pay down the minimum, I would highly recommend that you hide your credit cards from yourself. Don't make any other purchases. Now, it's very easy for me because I have one friend that I can trust, but if you have no one that you can trust, put it somewhere where you can set it and forget it and then put it in your notes app on your phone where your credit cards are. I will 100% 
forget that it's freaking there in the beginning. So anything that um, automatically goes to your credit card, you want to take those off. So any subscription services, you're going to delete those. But if there's anything like bills or anything that, that you do that goes to your credit card, I recommend switching those over to your debit card. Now, most people who are in finance will find that counterintuitive because you sometimes can put payments on the credit card and then pay it off with your uh, monthly budget. If you're watching this video, you probably don't have the the discipline or the skills to do that. So you want to establish a good relationship with money with your debit card first and then transition over to your credit card. Um, once you transition that over to your credit card, you'll be able to um, spend $300 on your credit card and pay that off immediately, which is the goal. So I'm at the point now where if I spend $600 on my credit card, um, which is normally associated with some type of bills or things that I've um, put into my budget, I can automatically just pay that off because it was money I was going to spend anyway. Okay. So tips on going out to eat. So this is a thing. Your life doesn't stop because you're trying to save money. That's number one. Those people who are saving money and you still want to go out and still have friends and you're like, you already took my Netflix away from me, my Spotify, what do I do? Listen, <laughs> you can still go out with friends, but you need to have the discipline to pick one or the other. You're gonna go out to eat with your friends. Are you going out for drinks? Or are you going out for food? Pick one. Don't have drinks and food. You're saving money and you're broke as shit, so don't even try it. Now for me, when I was really saving money and really serious, I only paid for appetizers. I would get one or two appetizers, um, depending on the restaurant, if it doesn't make economic sense to buy two appetizers and get an entree. <laughs> Maybe your friend, if they're generous, might buy you a drink, who knows. Point being said, be honest with your friends. Now, if you have really shitty friends, then you really should just get new friends. But if you have really good friends that you can be honest with and say, hey, I'm trying to budget, you know, I don't have money to like get drunk with you guys or get fucked up or contribute to whatever party. Not that you should be partying in a pandemic, but you know, we're thinking ahead and manifesting a brighter future. Please 2020, get better, please get better. <laughs> My friends were great. They would either buy a meal for me or they would buy a drink for me it just depends on what we were doing and it was really heartwarming knowing that I was trying to save money and they were supporting me like literally supporting me <laughs> if that if we wanted to have fun and I would do the same for them when I was frivolously spending money with my commission job you know I would spend money on them so you know if you have good friends it's a reciprocal relationship so this is something that I used to do a lot. I would hide money from myself. I would put money in a separate account somewhere where I couldn't see it, somewhere where I couldn't spend it. Um, my habits with money were so bad. They, they were just so flippant, you know what I mean? And so if you have that type of relationship with money, then you know keeping some of your money separate is might be helpful to you. So if someone sent me money, like if my mom sent me $25 in the cash app, I would leave it in cash app until I was ready to incorporate it into my um, my checking account. Same thing with like Venmo um, and savings account. So put some money that you get or some money that you are exchanging with people, keep that in a separate account so you won't feel inclined to spend it. Putting money in a separate account where you don't have access to it immediately, kind of psychologically like sets you up you know when you find money that you didn't realize you had in your pocket that's kind of the same thing so you know you might have fifty dollars in your bank account if you find that 20 in your jean pocket then all of a sudden you have seventy dollars and you're like you know happy as hell it's all psychological tricks with yourself especially if you don't have the willpower <laughs> last tip for you guys on this video is only go shopping once every couple months. If you're super broke, you're not shopping at all. But if you're one of those people like how I was and frivolously spending your money on shopping trips or you know whatever the case may be, my advice was eating out, um, go shopping once every six months. Have it set into your goal maybe, for example, if your goal is to have a set amount of money, you reached your goal, maybe go shopping with 10% of it. However, that that goes for you. You don't want to make yourself miserable when you're saving amount of money. Don't beat yourself up. Everything that you did up until this point is fixable and is reversible. Don't 
get discouraged with your money issues if you feel like you're in a hole. Pretty much like tried to punish myself in a way that was just ridiculous. Like I can't do anything about it. Like the only thing you can do is really go forward. Um, comment down below any savings tips that you might have. I only covered a few of them. In addition to that, if you want to see how I created my, um, my budget journal that I mentioned in this video, please comment down below. Let me know. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.